guys, Master Zeon here. This time we are giving a second look at this particular blend, Matzinga. Matzinga. Anyways, this was a model I saw on Blend Swap I found was pretty good. However, the person that uploaded it for some reason gave it a generic texture. And so I figured it'd be a good way to um, just mess around and do some texture painting on something interesting, like a completed model instead of modeling something myself and then having to go through the texturing because, well, usually by the time I'm done modeling, I don't feel like looking at it anymore until down the road, but whatever the case, I like this robot, so I decided I was going to um, rig it up. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Um, I also have it sped up again, which all my videos from here on out will probably be sped up to minimize the amount of time that y'all have to hear my voice. But right here, you see I'm snapping the cursor so I can snap the bone to where I think the bone, or not the bone, the hinge would be inside of it. Um, right here, you see me snapping the cursor and then snapping the bone to it. Um, I, I thought it was a good idea at the time. It turned out that it was not a good idea. Well, it, it was a good idea, but it turned out that it didn't work out as well. You'll see at the end of the video. But just kick back and enjoy. And I'll be quiet now. At this point, I realized all the fingers were actually pretty much the same position, maybe even the same finger. So I just pretty much cloned the bone and just tried to move them along. Um, for this point, I also turned off x-ray to make sure that it was completely inside of the model, like a bone should be. Um, but you can see that. Now when it comes to the foot, I started off about to do what's called the reverse chicken foot rigging method, but I, just, I realized that a robot is a lot more simpler than a human, especially because there's no transition between different areas of the body. Everything's pretty much solidly assigned to one bone. Um, so the way I usually do this is um, I just built the left side, name everything, maybe even set up the IK and constraints, and then from there just clone it over and then make it duplicate the rotation. So moving along pretty fast here go ahead and name the fingers pinky one pinky two pinky three and then down all the fingers with the pinky then the ring then the middle then the index and then of course the thumb Whenever it comes to doing the foot, uh, it's important to remember that the IK uh, foot control that you see in the back of the um, that you see in the back of the tarsal is not parented. So you want to select that in edit mode and hold P it and make sure that it doesn't show any parent over there in the uh, parent box because sometimes it'll still be there. Um, and I got it set up pretty good. Now, as far as the knee goes, in order to make the leg completely face forward. Uh, what I did was I just put a IK constraint causing the thigh.l to point at the knee.l with a um, number with a count of one in the uh, constraint panel. And then right here I start getting frustrated because I'm wondering why the hip and the why every time I parent the thigh to the hip it starts um, rotating badly, which it's not supposed to do. But it turns out that I figure it out here in a minute when I come under that all famous constraint panel after I delete the old phone, of course, to make a new one. Uh, any minute now I'll be figuring it out. And it's still messing up right here. Found out that this thing needs a constraint. I mean, um, it needs a number of one. And so I got the foot check. Um, might want to reverse that shoulder get a good rotation yeah there we go 
Go ahead and parent it to the uh, chest. Control P and edit mode. Parent all the uh, fingers to the hand. Now all my guys moving and rotating. Go ahead and save it as a new file. I don't want to mess up or overwrite the original one I downloaded from BlendSwap. Duplicate to the other side. Select all of the bones and then press Shift R. Don't make it copy those rotations. Otherwise, when you mirror the rotations, it'll look weird. Um, that's what envelope weights. So from here is the boring part, and that's the weight painting. Now, weight painting for a robot is ridiculously easy. Um, the workflow I pretty much used here was in weight paint mode. I realized that if I select the bone and then go into edit mode, it would have that bone selected so that I can assign the pieces of the mesh to it manually. But it's important to make sure that you turn off envelopes, especially if you don't want them to be used or don't know what they are, because they will make rigging a bit of a pain. And I'm just going to go through and assign all the bones. In fact, I might fast forward it just one more notch here. Now, white painting robots, as you can see, is definitely a lot easier than doing a human. Um, it's just making sure that you get the right parts assigned to the right bones and just be careful, um, especially when you get into the repetition of doing it this way, because sometimes you might assign two fingers to the same bone or something like that. So that's why you see me flashing in and out repeatedly, parenting each finger one by one to each, its respective bone. And so what I'm doing is I'm selecting a bone, going into edit mode, hovering my mouse over a part and pressing L to select that entire manifold mesh and then just parenting it to the bone. So it's pretty easy when you do it this way, except right there, you see I made a mistake. Two bones were, I mean two segments of the finger were red. And now for the right hand. This part got a little annoying because the body kept getting in the way. So I used my good buddy Alt-B to make only a certain part of the viewport visible. And now I'm able to assign this stuff ideally. And everything's assigned, my robot's moving. This robot's moving, not necessarily my robot, but you know, you get the point. So I try setting up a, um, a copy rotation on it, it starts getting weird. I realize I need to hit invert and set it to local space, do the same with the other foot. And now my robot is starting, now the robot is starting to get into the position where I can actually start posing him. Because, you know, a render would be pretty boring if he was just standing up like he was at the beginning of the video. So I want him to have a more action oriented pose. Maybe not with his foot like that, rotate his head, maybe not looking up, realize that might look a little silly, you should look at the viewer, Bam. maybe point at fist at him too, bend his leg like he's about to do some kung fu. At some, at some point in the video I accidentally pressed um, Alt-0 with the mesh selected and I actually made the camera that object, Matt Zinga, was the camera. So. I had to select the camera and press um, Alt-0 to fix that back. From here, I'm just setting up area lights. Um, with area lights, I tend to um, raise the samples up to at least eight and then just shorten out the, um, the distance so the fall off is a lot more gradual, turn on ambient occlusion so he has some contact with the ground. Now for the ground, the material is set up to be only shadow. In fact, this is going a bit fast. We might actually just back up here. Sorry about that. And we'll just go to just where I'm setting up the floor material. Here we go. And here's me dealing with the camera again. And we'll just start from right here. I know it's a bit of a drag to make y'all watch all this again, but what use is a speed video if you're not going to learn anything from it. So I set up the material, make it shadows only, so it doesn't show the boundaries of the floor in the render mode, and it still has the same gray background, but it just has contact with the floor. Now I'm changing it to UV editor so it doesn't make a new window. Turn on ambient occlusion, multiply. Now he has contact with the environment. Put the area light in. 
Samples A, size A, distance, shorten it. There we got a good beginning light. You see there's some banding from the shadow sampling. So I put a sunlight in, doesn't look so good. Throwing another area light. That tends to make the shadow extend a little far into the back. So I'm gonna just modify the floor. Try expanding it, that didn't work. Maybe build a studio backdrop for it. So bring it end up, go ahead and subdivide it so it has that smooth gradual slope going up. And of course turn on optimal display so it doesn't show all the additional geometry to subdivide as. Now I think the scene is starting to look a little bit better. However, the lighting can still use some work. I don't want there to be any dark areas in them. So at this point, get the camera a little bit better so it's not in the middle. Maybe just on the left, given the bro fist. Delete that, hide that light, hide that other light. I was about to say delete, but I remember I didn't delete them. But there's still some with the darkness, so a Hemi light's good for that. Hemis don't cast shadows, they're not so hard on the CPU. But the settings got to be turned down way low for it to really be of use. So I like to turn it down to around um, 0.2 generally, but here you see I got it at 0.5 or 0.05. I try to set it in some environment background color, but I think it kind of sets the model apart from it, and I kind of like it being usually dark in the back. I try turning on environment lighting, but environment lighting I've noticed under low values tends to remove the ground shadows and from the ambient occlusion. So, but if you turn it to a value of one, they come back. Um, but it's easier just remove it, leave it rendering fast. So here for the armature outside, I think that I'm gonna start setting up some poses. I shift L, set up a pose for that pose we had, give him a default pose, then I want to give him another pose where he's up, up, and away. Rotate his arm, maybe open his fingers up. Here's where you see where the rigging just doesn't work out right. I mean, I could probably get away with it, but the thing is, is that I know that that's not right. And so I'm gonna have to go back and correct that, but I didn't want to do it in the same video or else it'd be incredibly long, but. So now I've got three poses set up, but I'm gonna stick with that one, like that one the most. And that concludes Matt Zinga part one. So we'll be going back over this and doing the actual texture painting, which is what I wanted to do, but I wanted to be able to pose on like the wallpaper you saw there. 